Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. Fun fact. Did you know that there is no such thing as multitasking? You can't do two things at once, actually. Your brain really is just quickly shifting back and forth between two different things. You're not doing two things at once. Now, I remember when Jay Johnson was hired last season for baseball. And last season, he said that the that was the first time in his head coaching career that he did not coach third base on game day. He decided he was a better head coach being in the dugout and letting somebody else take care of that. And that's continued here at LSU. Since Lane Kiffin has made his comeback as a head coach at FAU and now Ole Miss, uh, he has been very, very insistent that one of the big changes that he's made is that he is no longer the primary play caller on game day anymore. He insists that his offensive coordinators are. They don't have to multitask because they can delegate. But what is good about their situation is that they have the opportunity to delegate. I'm not so sure that's something Will Wade has the opportunity to do. Will Wade has weaknesses as a coach. Every coach does, but Will Wade has them. And I've been saying that and describing those weaknesses going on for three years now. Before it was cool to to criticize Will Wade, I have been saying he is weak at half-court offense, teaching half-court offense, offensive game management, uh, especially at the end of games, all those things. And his problem is not just Adam Miller being out all season or Xavier Pinson playing essentially on one leg. His problem is that he currently does not have the ability to delegate his weakness. LSU should not have lost the game to South Carolina this Saturday. There's no excuse for it, for that specific game. But what is happening now, not really surprisingly, is that LSU fans are looking at a midseason slump riddled with injuries and you know some bad performances and just saying, hey, let's throw the baby out with the bathwater and just fire the coach who took over a team with the worst season in LSU basketball it had in 50 years, and since his second season has taken you to the tournament every single year with the lowest men's basketball budget in the SEC. One of the lowest. And he won the most SEC games the previous three seasons despite all of those things. Jay Johnson is known for not being very good at defensive X's and O's, and specifically pitching staff, managing the pitching staff. It it was a problem at Arizona. It was a problem when he was at Nevada. But at LSU Baseball, that won't be, because he has the top resources in the SEC, which means he has the top resources in the country to go hire a pitching coach. Hint, pitching coach Jason Kelly, who's one of the best in the business. Whatever Brian Kelly's weaknesses are, and I'm sure we'll find them eventually because every coach has one, he has no excuse not to fix them because LSU football has one of the top resources and budgets in the country. Comparing the success of football coach at LSU to the coach of a basketball coach at LSU is insane. It's insane. You're comparing apples to oranges. One has more help than the other. Well, he's got top five talent, Nick. What is he doing with all that talent? Um, Will Wade has had only one top five class at LSU. One. And you know what he did with it? He won the SEC title and went undefeated on the road. Do you realize what I'm saying? On the road, they went undefeated in the SEC the year that he had top five talent. The one year he had. And despite missing out on some recruits that he normally would have gotten because of the NCAA investigation hurting his recruiting the past three years, he still gets you to the tournament every single year. With the budget that LSU men's basketball is working with, that's not normal. And you're going to the tournament again this year. Despite your biggest recruit, Adam Adam Miller, being out the entire season. Despite all of that. And you want to fire him. Well, Kim Mulkey doesn't have this problem in year one with the exact same facilities as Will Wade. Okay, A, don't you ever compare anyone to Kim Mulkey ever again. She's a genius. You're just setting yourself up for disappointment. B, Kim Mulkey has actually, believe it or not, more staff members and a bigger staff budget to help her than Will Wade does. Bet you didn't know that. See, Kim Mulkey inherited a program when she was 
a three-time national champion at 59 years old, where she had just got inducted into the Hall of Fame and had 21 years of head coaching experience. Will Wade, he inherited the program, was an unknown 34-year-old with four years of head coaching experience. Will Wade never played past his freshman year of high school basketball, while Kim Mulkey played in the Olympics with Michael Jordan the same year Will Wade was still sucking on his mama's titty. I'd say there's a difference. I'd say Mulkey being second place in the SEC her first year at LSU and Will Wade winning the SEC his second year at LSU is pretty damn fair. What else is frustrating is that now people are saying, there's no excuse for the second half season letdown, Nick. No excuses. You got to learn life lessons. There's no excuses in life. All right, Mr. No Excuses, Mrs. No Excuses. Fine. Let me ask it to you this way. If I were to tell you right now that Kim Mulkey would have to go back in time and play this entire season all over again without Alexis Morris and without either Pointer or Cherry, one of their other veteran point guards, one of them out for 10 SEC games. If I told you that, would you be willing to bet big money that they are still second in the SEC just as they are right now? No? You wouldn't? Well, guess what? Then you do believe in excuses because there are excuses in life because that is basically what has happened to Will Wade's team this season. I guarantee you if Pinson was perfectly healthy all season long and they had Adam Miller from the get-go, they'd be a lot better where they are right now. And I mean a lot better. I I mean... (laughs) I feel this is so frustrating because I feel like I've turned into a Will Wade apologist despite the fact that I've been one of the people criticizing him for his weaknesses as a coach way before it was the cool thing to do. But now everyone's gone crazy and so now I have to defend Will Wade and say, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop. Stop. Take a deep breath. You're being idiots. Well, Will Wade just isn't good enough. Great coaches don't need big time money and resources to succeed. You're again making excuses. Oh, really? Do you know what Nick Saban average wins per year were? His five seasons at Michigan State? You want to take a guess? Six and a half. Six and a half wins per year in five seasons. All of a sudden, Nick Saban comes to LSU and... And in five years, he wins two SEC titles and a national championship. Now, how in the fuck do you think that happened? It couldn't be because LSU gave him a bigger recruiting budget, a bigger staff support, higher staff pay than Michigan State was willing to give him. Because all of a sudden, when that happened, well, Saban just, I guess, all of a sudden became a better coach. That's a hell of a coincidence, isn't it? No, coach can multitask and do everything. I don't care how great they are. No one can. They can only do so much for so long. I don't care how great the coach is. No one does it by themselves. What Will Wade needs is a bench coach. What LSU needs to do is get more money involved into the program and help him give him that. An extra set of eyes to teach offensive sets at practice and can help uh, you know, call them in the game in situational awareness. And offensive coordinator for basketball, if you will. Because Will Wade, he was basically, in his own words, a glorified defensive coordinator at VCU and at Harvard when he was an assistant coach. He was basically the DC. Never went on the offensive side of the ball. But as a head coach, he's you know kind of had to. But he can win with great talent, despite all of that. And there is great talent. I mean great. The highest ranked it's ever been for Will Wade They're all coming in next season. Three five-stars and a few more transfers. We'll see. But when Wade just has good players, like he has right now, he needs things to go a very specific way. And due to health and injuries, they unfortunately didn't go as planned. Sucks. But Will Wade can't really overcome that. He's not that great of a coach. But guess what? Most coaches can't. And that's okay. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.